Welcome to another episode of Racing to Learn. We are a nonprofit that uses radio control to get kids excited about math and science. We're back in our workshop today taking a look at the shocks that we're preparing for our ECX Ruckus. These are the same across all of the ECX two-wheel drives and probably the four-wheel drives too. I We don't have any four-wheel drive ECX vehicles. Um, so I, I'm not sure exactly, but I'm pretty sure that they're the same. Um, we've got both the upgraded aluminum versions as well as in the shop today, we've got one of the stock plastic versions. So uh, apparently the plastic versions are a little bit notorious, I, I even want to say, for um, for just not retaining shock fluid too well. Um, we haven't actually run these before ourselves in the past. The, uh, the Ruckus that we bought used, the Ruckus Brushless, actually came with these aluminum bodied shocks, uh, which apparently are very good bargain for the deal, or bargain for the price, I should say. So, uh, you know, we, we got two of these already uh, prepared, the, the two rear shocks. We have cleaned these, we've filled these up with fluid. Um, you know, you can see that there's a slight rebound there, and actually they're they're kind of bottoming out here. So um, we're used to dealing with Traxxas shocks here. Uh, you know, just because the uh, the amount of Traxxas vehicles that that uh, that we've had, the slash and whatnot. Um, and when you fill these Traxxas shocks up, here's just the plastic body. When you fill it up to the top here, you've actually got to wait uh, or fill it up to the point where you've got kind of a meniscus, a little concave um, shape there in the in the fluid where it's kind of sticking to the edge of the uh, of the shock body here uh, or the top of the fluid and then it, it kind of dips down in a little parabolic shape there. And that's to accommodate the uh, the seal that goes on top of the the uh, the shock body here, that the cap here, um, and or rather the, the rubber seal that goes into the shock cap. Uh, however, when we filled the ECX shock in that fashion, it was a little bit interesting because you know, usually you would expect this to compress all the way, but I can't press this any further um, without exerting a huge amount of force, which I don't want to because um, you know I'm, I'm probably going to make it leak or, or bust out through one of the seals or whatnot, uh, all that pressure. So... Um, you know, so we filled it up to the top there, we screwed the cap on, and then uh, there's this nice little um, cutout here in these shocks. Let me just try to find it here, and it might be covered up by the shock cap now. But anyways, the excess fluid will bleed out of that little uh, slot. I'll show you in this shock body here. Here there we go. It's, it's on the threads over here, right? So the excess uh, shock fluid will actually bleed out of the slot and out and you just want to clean that up. But um, you know, with the, the shock cap fully tightened, we can't compress the shock the, the whole way. It's bottoming out here, uh, you know, probably only actually less than halfway through its, its full amount of travel. And at that point, I, I, I went back to, uh, to crack open one of these, these uh, old plastic shocks and I'll just open that up over here so you can see that um, I'm gonna probably need some leverage here so I'm gonna put this pick that we have through just crack open the shock body and you'll actually notice that there is an o-ring on the bottom of this cap or rather at the top of this cap um, and that's not what we have going on over here with um, the other shocks, the aluminum-bodied shocks. Uh, when when I disassembled those, I, I found these, uh, you know, rubber caps, just like we have on the 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 Traxxas shocks. And you'll notice that it's got this concave shape, right? Whereas uh, an O-ring, um, it's uh, it's just going to sit in the top of that cap. And it's not going to have that concave shape taking up extra uh, volume for the oil. So I'm thinking that that's the key difference here. Um, so either I'm going to have to take out some of the shock fluid that we've already put in, or, actually, or switch these over to 
um, switch these over to the O-rings that uh, we have in the uh, the other plastic shot caps. Um, I haven't decided at this point what I want to do exactly. Um, probably it's it's going to be either one of those two approaches. So uh, I, I'm going to do a little research uh, uh, on the forums, but before I make that uh, that decision, but just wanted to give you guys that that data point. Um, we uh, we also found these other two completely aluminum bodied shocks, right? Uh, these were actually on the uh, the slash LCG that we bought. So the previous owners had put these shocks on. You know the, the manufacturing on these is looks okay. It's it's definitely not as high quality uh, as the um, as the ECX uh, shocks, right? You can see uh, we've got this fine thread here. It's it's a coarse thread on this shock, just in terms of adjustability for the um, uh, you know for the ride height of those springs, or rather the height of those the the compression place on those springs. Um, you know, not a huge deal. Uh, the the balls in these um, uh, in these the pivot balls in these rod ends don't have the the best. Uh, they're not very smooth. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I'm not sure what we're going to do with these, but just just thought I'd break these out as an, an extra option. You know, sometimes when you see these uh, aftermarket shocks on, on eBay or whatnot, they look great because they're aluminum bodied and whatnot, but um, the quality um, may, uh, you know, may not be as high as you would expect from an OEM product like the ECX. Uh, upgraded aluminum shocks, uh, and you know basically you get what you pay for. Um, now the interesting thing about these shocks is that when I when I when we got the vehicle they were noticeably empty, um, meaning there was no silicon fluid in these whatsoever. Um, so that probably damaged the O-rings at least. Uh, I'm not sure if the own, previous owner just never filled these up with fluid or if the fluid leaked out. Uh, I'm not going to find out one way or another. At least I'm going to replace these O-rings. Um, they, they should be a, a pretty standard size. I'm going to go ahead and disassemble and clean those shocks when I have the chance. But, um, you know, all these 1 10th uh, shocks uh, usually use that, the, the same diameter of O-ring here. It's, it's a 2 millimeter inner diameter, 3 millimeter uh, outer diameter. If I'm, if I'm uh, actually, I think it's, a, it's just called a 2 by 3 O-ring. Um, don't quote me on those diameters and whatnot. I'm probably stating it wrong. So, um, but they do all use a, a similar uh, diameter or similar size O-rings. Um, I did find an interesting post on one of the forums that one of the guys found uh, just an O-ring company, a company that specializes in O-ring O-rings for industrial purposes, and had really good results with those O-rings that he purchased. And just given the amount of O-rings that we go through right here, the amount of shocks that we have. Uh, and especially those that need to be rebuilt. The ones that you see here are just a handful where we bent the uh, the pins on, but you can even see, uh, you know, we tried to salvage some of these these X rings from the Traxxas, Traxxas shocks, um, but most most of them, or all of them, I think, had uh, some tears in them, so didn't didn't want to reuse those. Uh, so anyways, thanks again for watching. Let us know if you guys find these videos useful. Please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.